This right here is a sub $100 pistol red dot sight. And the only question I have left about it is, how does this thing actually work? Because in all honesty, it does do the bare minimum job that it was advertised to do, which I was surprised by. This is the Hexion Tech Seeker. It was sent to the channel by Strike Industry, so full disclosure there. And it is sub 100 bucks. And it definitely has some sub $100 attributes. And at first, I definitely had some hesitations because I assumed at the price point and for what it was, it would be absolute dog shit. However, it's kind of not. Yes, it has some struggles and it has some challenges, which we'll discuss, but in all reality, for under 100 bucks, I'm kind of impressed. So let's go over what this particular optic might be good for, what you might want to pick one up for, some things that it actually does okay, some things that it's not very good for, as soon as we get a word in from today's video sponsor. The sponsor of this video is Aura, an all-in-one digital security asset that can protect your identity. If you've ever received emails saying that you've won a free prize and all you have to do is submit your personal information to receive it, you've likely been victimized by data brokers. Data brokers are sites that sell your personal information all over the dark web to the highest bidder, which can be very dangerous. Now, legally, they have to remove your information upon request, but they make that process extremely arduous, which is where Aura comes in. They take care of that for you, as well as supplying you with a lot of other tools. And you can try it for free right now by using the link in the description, as well as in the pinned comment, aura.com slash magic prepper, which gives you 14 days to try it out and also receive things such as alerts in case your info is being shared on the dark web. You get real time fraud alerts as well for credit and banking. It's 24 seven monitoring to keep your identity secure, a secure VPN, a password manager, as well as a US based customer service support team, which can help you out in case anything goes south. Now, finding out your information is being sold all over the dark web to malicious actors is very upsetting. So make sure you check out Aura in order to try to protect yourself, protect your identity, and maintain security over your digital footprint. All right, big thanks to Aura for supporting the channel. Link down in the pinned comment below. So the Hexion Tech Seeker, right? Like I said, it's a Strike Industries product by all means, but it is the Hexion Tech Seeker, which is an RMR footprint 3 MOA red dot. And the RMR footprint, obviously a good thing, and it does have a top loaded battery, so you don't have to remove it to change the batteries out, which is a good thing. And it's a CR2025. Now, the reason for that is because you have to change the size a little bit to be able to make it top loading in that RMR footprint. So unfortunately, that's one of the first dings to this particular optic is it doesn't just integrate into your current battery logistics system, although it does make it so you don't have to take it off every time you replace the battery. So Pros and cons, I guess. Now, I will say that top-loaded battery system, a little weird. It uses really tiny Phillips head screws. So you are provided that in the box in the sense of the wrench you need for that to work, but it's a little odd and a little concerning in the sense of like overall longevity, but also sub 100 bucks. So ah, how long are we expecting this thing to last? Anyway, it also has four reticle options. So you have your 3MOA dot, and then you have a circle dot, you have a crosshair, and then you can combine them and all kinds of stuff. Don't do it. Just use the dot. Even though I did have this mounted on a shotgun and I was using the circle crosshair for that because it seemed cool, it's not a good idea. And the reason why is because it will drain your battery immediately. Listen, it's supposed to have a 30,000 hour battery life which I highly doubt. And the reason I say that is because I've already burnt one of these batteries by having it in a multi-reticle option with the brightness at a level that I could actually see it at and the battery died very quickly. So stick to the three MOA dot and keep the brightness level at a, you know, medium to high level, which we'll talk about here in a second, but then the battery should last a decent amount of time because this is only the second battery I've been on and it hasn't died yet. So it's lasted longer by switching from that multi-reticle format. So just wanted to put that out there. Now, it does have motion activation, so it should conserve battery, which is how they reach that 30,000 hour mark. But uh, I'm not sure how much I buy into that, but I also don't care because it's a sub $100 red dot site. And I wouldn't use this in any sort of, you know, critical capacity where I'd have to rely on this particular optic to save my life. Like that's just not what it's for in my opinion. So I don't really care about that a whole lot. We'll talk about some more use cases here in a minute, but that's just something I wanted to bring up because the motion activation is like, sure, whatever. Now, 
It has eight brightness settings. None of them are specifically labeled to be for night vision. And um, I mean, you can make it work with night vision, of course, but it's not necessarily designated for that. It does work though. So like, that's just something to keep in mind. Not that that really matters because if you have night vision and you're worried about that, why are you buying a sub hundred dollar red dot site, right? But regardless, you can make it work if you need to. But the issue there is that these eight brightness settings, there needs to be about three or four more. And when I say that, I mean on the high end. This little red dot site is not bright enough. It's very dim. Now, is it still visible in daylight bright conditions? Yes, you can still shoot with it. You can still hit the target. It's usable, but you always wish it could get brighter. And so, of course, you already have the you know battery life stated at 30,000 hours, but you have to run this thing on as bright as it can possibly go if you're in a bright daylight environment. And at that point in time, we all know the battery is draining much, much faster. So yes, it has all those settings. You're gonna use like two of them, the top two highest settings, but hey, it's still visible, which means you can still use it, which means you're still in business for under a hundred bucks. The other thing that's kind of nice about this optic is that it sits very low. You can see it's like a very low sitting optic and it has that kind of like front forward contour to it that kind of looks like an SRO or something like that. Um, but what else is really nice is that it's got a very wide window. Like the window is extremely wide and it's low. So it gives you kind of more of like a panoramic view, which is kind of nice, but it's, um, it's, just, it's just like one of the better benefits of this particular optic, I guess, in the sense of form factor. So that's kind of good actually. Now, Let's talk about the site itself in the sense of performance. I already talked about some of the battery issues. I already talked some of the brightness issues. I already talked about all the things you expect from that sub hundred dollar price point. And of course, all the multi reticle stuff, that's just good features for marketing and stuff like that. But it kills your batteries and it's completely pointless at the end of the day, right? Like nobody's mad when they have an Aimpoint T2 on something because it's a solid red dot site that just works. And I doubt anyone's like, man, if only this had a crosshair circle reticle, I'd really be happy about it, right? Like it's just, doesn't super matter, okay? But especially on a pistol optic, at least in my opinion. Now, here's where I have to give this thing at least some level of accolades. I've had this thing on a Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol without issue. Other than the battery dying, no issues at all. It worked, it held zero, and it was able to ride on top of a 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun with no issue. I then had it on this particular pistol, the Glock 45 MOS, which is generally a little bit harder on optics because of that reciprocating slide and everything you know, running back and forth. That's a lot of energy uh, and a lot of physics that are suddenly being applied to the optic itself, the housing, the mounting screws and everything else. Works just fine, holds zero and hasn't had any issues, right? And it's even on a good old MOS RMR mounting plate. Gotta love it, right? So, it's actually done what it's supposed to do. And that's one of the things that I was surprised by because I expected it to just kind of shit the bed at some point here, but it didn't. It just, it just works. So that is surprising to me and also impressive for this price point. And the best thing I could say about it is that it gives me hope that sometime in the near future here, we might actually have like sub hundred dollar red dot optics that are potentially good enough for preparedness purposes which is a good place for us to be. Although I understand like personally, even from the peace of mind you get from having like a Trigicon RMR or having something a little bit more substantial in the sense of from like a higher quality manufacturer, if we can find ourselves in a position where pistol mounted red dot optics are under a hundred bucks, but actually do the job they're supposed to do and hold up and have good battery life and longevity and everything else, that's gonna be a good place for us to be for the average American being able to afford some of these things that do enhance your you know, ability to shoot, at least in my opinion. So what would I personally use this red dot optic for at a sub $100 price point? I think the most obvious thing is that if you don't know if you want a red dot sight on your pistol or not, this is a very low risk investment, right? Like you can get one of these, they're really cheap, and then just find out if a red dot on your pistol is something worth trying, right? And ensure you get the right mounting set up in the sense of, you know, it is an RMR footprint. You might have to use a plate or whatever it is because I did try this optic on a P365 with an adapter plate because that was something that they actually provide from Strike Industries. Um, and the adapter plate just wasn't very good and it flew off and hit me in the forehead. The optic also flew off. The optic took a pretty good hit and the optic still works no problem at all. So, I mean, good for the optic, 
bad adapter plate, but that thing is still up and running. So I guess, you know, at least we know it can fly off a pistol slide, hit me in the face and then hit the ground and still work, which no, I'm not going to torture test this thing because I don't care. Like that's, what are we torture testing these things for? We know their breaking point. We know their fragility. We know their level of craftsmanship when it comes to the price point. It tells you everything right there. It's sub a hundred bucks. Yeah, if I torture test it, it's gonna break and stop working. But I don't need it to be that type of an optic. It's not a duty quality optic. It's a great optic to try out red dot optics on a pistol in case you're new to that whole situation and you're not sure if it's something you'll like or something you want. And it gives you an opportunity to give it a try without breaking the bank. And I think that's actually not a terrible thing. The other thing I'm gonna use this particular optic for is on my training rifle setup which my training rifle, which is a project I'm working on, which you'll all be able to see a little bit more thoroughly here in the near future, is a training analog of my main go-to rifle. And so it's built in the same form and function, but with lesser expensive components, right? So like everything in it is much more affordable because it's the training rifle. I don't need it to be top tier or don't necessarily want to be able to afford to make it top tier. But it does all the same ideas in the sense of having a prism optic, right? And in, in the sense of having a top mounted red dot. And this as an offset or top mounted red dot, especially on a training setup that you're not necessarily planning on using in a serious use case scenario, will do the job. And it's gonna go right on top of my hero mod mount for my primary arms SLX 5X micro prism. And it's gonna sit there and probably work just fine other than being an open emitter optic, which Generally, I'm gonna to want to close the emitter, especially on a rifle, but for a training rifle, that's not necessarily gonna be hard use. I think it will work out just fine. And it does allow me to get bright enough to use in that sense. And it does get dim enough to use with night vision if I need to. So it can do all those things without breaking the bank and without really having to spend a whole bunch on the training rifle setup, right? Because the red dot sight on top of my ACOG is the equivalent of like seven of these. That's a lot of red dots I could have had instead, I guess, right? So. This is that Hexion Tech Seeker. Sub 100 bucks, actually works, which I, I don't know, I'm a little flabbergasted by it because I just assumed it would just break, right? Or just stop working or whatever. And it hasn't, and it, and it works. And it's been on a shotgun, it's been on a pistol, and it's gonna live on a rifle now. And um, I don't know what else you want for under 100 bucks. So if you're new to Red Dots, you're not sure you're something, it's something you want, Try one of these first, and that way you don't have to worry about spending three or $400 on something that might not even work out for you or not, might not even you know, provide you with what you were hoping. And then um, if you decide it works for you and it's something you wanna do, this can be a great little placeholder until you have the extra money to buy something more substantial and higher quality that you could actually rely on in a self-defense scenario. And I think that's a good place to be. And then if you wanna use it in an offset mount on a rifle, on a training rifle, no big deal, good to go. I think it'll work just fine in that regard. Uh, but even on a rifle where your main optic is good and then you just need an offset red dot just for like other situations that might arise. I mean, this could do that for you in the meantime while you're working on saving up for something a little bit better. So all those things are definitely, you know, available to you when it comes to this particular optic. And um, I hope we see more sub hundred dollar red dots that do actually work. Are they good? No, good's a strong word, but do they do the bare minimum job of holding a zero and being a red dot sight? Yeah, at least this one does. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, what you think about something like the Hexion Tech Seeker. Let me know your experiences with other sub hundred dollar red dot optics and anything else you need from me at all, you can go to magicpepper.com. Make sure you check out that link from Aura in the description as well as in the pinned comment because I really appreciate their support. And that's gonna be it for Magic Prepper.